Everybody ready for another giveaway? That's right. We're doing it again. Here's what we're going to give away this time. MAPS Strong. This is a strongman-inspired workout program. Some of the areas you'll find developing in this workout are your posterior chain, your back, your glutes. It's also great for the shoulders. Just generally makes you strong, buffed, and sexy. Who doesn't want to be strong, buffed, and sexy? If you don't, you're watching the wrong channel because that's what we do. We teach you how to do that. Anyhow, here's how you win MAPS Strong. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to that incredible program. Aren't we nice? Also, one more thing. Right now, we're running a sale, 50% off MAPS HIT and the No BS six-pack formula. They're both half off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. Let's go, dude. Drop your study. I want to hear what you have today. Oh, I got one. Let's hear it. I got a good one. You so always th do. I want to there hear was it. a study done on college-aged males uh, who were lifting weights, and they had them work out for, I believe, six weeks, and then they took two weeks off completely, so two weeks off totally, went back to the gym, worked out, and then compared them to a group that didn't take any time off. And here's what they found. In two weeks, they lost no muscle and no strength. Now weeks. that's so weird because Wowzers. I know I've read studies before that said uh, atrophy starts to happen three days after recovery of, of a training session. Most people take anywhere between three to five days to fully recover from a training session, which would elude that after seven to eight days, roughly from a from a, a, a muscle being stimulated, atrophy already begins to happen. So that completely contradicts. That. It does, mm. and when you look at the the actual studies done on real subjects, and they're testing their strength and they're measuring muscle hypertrophy, you see very little to no changes with two weeks off right. of not doing anything. All, well, all counting like the calories are the same yes. and the, their eating schedule. And yeah, everything. yeah. And look, I'll tell you what. How many times have you experienced this? You go on vacation, you come back stronger. Ever happen to you? Yeah. yeah. You're like, well, how did that happen? Well, especially if you went a long string of just training and then all of a sudden you take this break that you think is going to well, ruin your gains. Well, I'll tell you what. Like one of the number one questions I used to get from potential clients or members, which was annoying, was – uh, okay, so I build this amazing body. What happens if I stop working out, right? And I just be like, I get irritated. Well, I mean, everything goes away. Well, I got to keep it up. Well, of course you got to keep it up. And that's definitely very true. However, I think this highlights one of the incredible aspects of uh, strength training or resistance training is of all the forms of exercise, it's one of the more permanent ones. Mm -hmm. Like, can yeah. you take two weeks off of anything else and no. not notice a dramatic decline wow, in that's performance. really fascinating. Yeah. Isn't it? How, how big of a group? Was it a good-sized group? Did you look into uh, how, like... Yeah, let me look into the details. Was, yeah, this wasn't, like, a, a terrible study. Well, no, I think it was a small group. I think it was 20, but that's big enough, and it also cooperates with other studies that show that well, yeah, taking I, time I, off... I've brought up the study that I know Lane shared recently on, on his Instagram mm -hmm. about, and I believe theirs was done over 12 or 18 weeks, something like that. I think it was, like, around three months long, where every fourth week... They took a full week off mm. and then resumed training. And by the end of the three-month training period, it was almost identical to the people who trained every single day the entire time. Here's huh? here's the other part of this I, I, I forgot to say. Not only did they not lose strength or muscle, they didn't get any fatter. They didn't gain any body fat in that two-week period. Wow. So the metabolism boost that they got from the resistance training stuck with them for at least a couple weeks. God, I mean, so That'd be so hard. I mean, they obviously would have to... Uh, either recalibrate their calorie intake uh to why do, or un unless you're assuming that the they sped their metabolism up in the week before and then that speeding it that's up exactly is enough for them is. to just maintain those calories that's what i would assume it is right because mm, the calories burn during exercise it's so uh, minimal it's not that big of a deal and your body adapts to that the ca calories manually burned where i'm moving to burn your body starts to account for that and starts to adapt. And look, I've, how many times have I quoted studies on modern hunter-gatherers and mm. how they don't even burn more calories than the average couch potato because their body adapts. But building strength and building muscle does cause these, these awesome metabolic changes that stick around. They stick around for, in this study, at least a couple of weeks. In other studies, it read as long as Now, when you read something like this, does it, uh, does it pique your interest to kind of like, okay, the next two or three months, I'm going to do something different. And like, I'm going to mm. play around with this newfound research and 
intentionally take right. like a week off. Like I, I want to stretch that out and see, you know, like a study that will keep going then and see like what it actually really takes. does uh, degrade. Yeah. You know? So here's why it doesn't for me personally is because I don't work out necessarily for strength and muscle. That's great. But I like it because of the meditative. Like I like the, the, I like doing it for the sake of doing it. So taking a week off, I would miss out. On, oh, see, on, it interests the shit out of me because yeah. I'm all about doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount yeah. of change. And so if I could do even less working out and still maintain a strong, fit, healthy looking body. Maybe take a week off every month. Like I, three weeks hard, one week off. Now, yeah. the only reason why I'm not doing that scheduled right now is because that's kind of happening, right? We just got back from a vacation. I oh, think I, I trained one time in the, the seven days that we were off. And so, you know, I, I just allow. But I, I think this is a good conversation to have because I know the teenage and young 20 version of me would freak out and overcorrect. Mm -hmm. Right when you take the you take oh, those days yeah. off and then you you restrict calories like crazy or you come back and you over overdo yep. it trying to make up for the lost time when in reality if you just kind of cruise right through that time off it probably do be extremely well, behaviorally it's it is somewhat psychologically tough to you know t take time off and then like you know get that motivation to to summon again sometimes for people so it's like a lot of times it isn't very beneficial to take a you know a long period of time off but you know some time yeah. off obviously it doesn't de you know there's not a lot of detriment well this it. is probably i mean i'll tell you honestly this is I, I never i've never read this study specifically but i know i've read the one that that lane shared and this is why I, out of the three of us i probably am the most inconsistent when we go up to Truckee. Because I'm like, yeah, it's my time off. Like I train yeah. very consistently when I'm at home, and uh, this is my time to be with my son and play and and enjoy Katrina and you guys and mm -hmm. family and sleep in. And it's like I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not. I, I'm gonna now because of that. I also am aware though of what tends to happen is when people tend to shut down also and then go, oh, now I'm going to eat like an asshole too. Yeah, then their diet goes the wrong so way. So that's where you have to be careful mm -hmm. if you go, okay, well that's great. You know, the guys share this study that said that mm -hmm. it's beneficial for me to take a week off. Okay, now you also have to try and keep your your diet in check because what I I think and there's studies to share show this that right, when you're training healthy. and you're and, and you eat better you eat better that's true yeah because you know you know oh, I that's don't true. want to waste now my to extra. be clear this probably doesn't apply to other forms of exercise because remember that the results you get from strength training is you build muscle you add satellite cells they stick around you get what's called muscle memory. Muscle loss is a slower process than endurance loss or, or calories burned while you move. Other forms of exercise, I don't think you're going to get this. I don't think if your primary form of exercise is spin classes and then you take no do no spin classes for two weeks and eat the same amount of calories, I don't think you're going to see also no loss in performance right. or you know and no gain in body fat. I think you're going to see some of that. But it just goes to show the resilience – that happens to the body when you tell it to build uh, muscle. It like, sticks around, which is really cool. And it reminds me of you know, uh, Kevin Lavrone, one of my favorite bodybuilders of the 90s. This guy was probably one of the greatest uncrowned- So uh, the best arms. Mr. Olympia. Great delts and arms. He used to take a tremendous amount of time off in the off-season. So most bodybuilders would bulk in the off-season and get massive. He would like get small, not work out. And then he would- he was known for going pre-contest and growing into the contest. And you would talk about how his body was responsible. So, so that's huh. a question I would have about this study is you know, I wonder what a difference it makes comparing the uh, you know novice beginner versus the advanced lifter sure. who has decades of training on there. Because there's no doubt in my mind, and I, we've shared this on the podcast recently, that yeah. – I, I definitely notice it takes very little work for me to maintain the physique that I've built today yep. uh, compared to what it took a decade ago. Yeah, that's so, a good point. Uh, yes. I could definitely see somebody who's got that great muscle memory, put trained a lot of time on the iron. They probably tend to hang on to that. I mean, Ben Pakulski is another example of this. That guy was trying to lose muscle. 100 pounds of muscle yeah. he yeah. tried to lose. It took <laughs> and, he a, yeah. and he had a hard time doing that. He's still, I think, still trying to do it, and he hasn't fully succeeded, which I know everybody who's trying to build muscle goes, what an asshole. I've yeah. been but busting my ass to try and do that, but that just that again speaks to the the time under the iron that he right. spent for so long that his body is so adapted to having that muscle that it takes a it's lot. It's hard more to wired lose it. at that point, right? It, and that's the thing, yeah. Those those years of work that you know build your foundation. That's something that yeah, it does benefit you later on. You can sort of cruise a bit and, and well, not be as I, uh, you know affected. I would also like to see the difference between somebody who. Uh, keeps their, uh, their their macros up and and hitting their targets to to maintain that muscle versus somebody who kind of like ah whatever 
and let's go. Like how resilient is the body if your diet it, also goes across? Right. Like oh, and yeah. versus somebody who's like been dialed and they're hitting their because that I'm assuming that, right, in this study that these people were hitting their protein intake to maintain that. But what I know is that when I take a week off, that I have to be careful of that because real quickly I skip a meal, I decide to have a dessert somewhere, yeah. and the next thing I know, I have this huge shift it's a domino in domino effect. Of yeah, the higher is. carbohydrate, yeah. higher fat, l- lower protein diet now, and, and I'm not training. And then there's also like the muscle hyperplasia, muscle fiber hyperplasia, you know, theory, which like it, where you you don't just grow muscle fibers, but you create new muscle fibers, and if you do lose muscle, you don't lose those muscle fibers; they're like permanent. And this may be why you notice, like what we're saying, people who've been working out for years and years and years and years tend to have almost like permanent muscle gain to some extent. Like, I will never forget this. I was working out in my, I had my personal training studio and we had big glass doors and windows. And next to me was this really popular coffee shop. And Saturday mornings, there was a line and people waiting out uh, outside. It was a great way to, to get new clients and whatever. So anyway, I'm in there and I was in between clients and I'm doing some exercises and in walks in this, like he's he had to be in his in his mid seventies to eighties uh, gentleman that walks in. He comes in, little guy, and he and he spoke broken English, and he goes, "How much does this weigh?" And he was pointing to one of my kettlebells, and it was a seventy pound kettlebell. And he picked it up and he he pressed it and did all. That. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I looked at him carefully, and he definitely looked like an old man. Didn't look like he worked out, but I noticed his forearms were like. <laughs> so built and when he was doing these movements his shoulders kind of looked built so i'm like you work out and he goes oh no i don't work out for 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 years and years and years but i used to be a competitive weightlifter for and i forgot the country it was an eastern Bloc country i think it was belarus or something like that and he did it for years and years and years and i said you don't work out anymore no no i don't work out anymore. but i swear if you looked at this guy's forearms you would have you thought he was a liar but that yeah. was just it was it was like that permanent muscle that he got from you know all that training, which that's that's crazy. Yeah, really, really cool. I have a, I have a question for you while we're questioning things and trying to get to the bottom and figure it out. Is uh, I when we went on vacation. I took my I took my Ned Mello with me because it's just like it's become my routine before I go to yeah. bed. Absolutely love it. It's been a game changer for me. Yeah. Well, when I got home, I didn't realize that I didn't have any more in stock. So I've been out for this this last week. I ordered some and I'm waiting for it to come. But in 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 the meantime. I've continued taking ZMA, which is something you turned me on yeah, to. Zinc magnesium aspartate. Yeah, That's it's going. an Opto Nutrition brand. It's a brand that we don't even work with, uh, but you turned me on to their their supplement a long time ago, and so I still had some left over, the pill form of that, which you know I thought, okay, well, it's probably the magnesium deficiency is what we've alluded to of probably why I, I feel so much better when I sleep at night. I, I didn't get the same calming effect, and, and I can definitely tell a clear difference between when I drink the, the Ned Mellow Versus when I take those pills, do you can you have any idea why? It's the type of magnesium that that it contains. Do you think that's what it is? I know it is. If you look at this, I would so, imagine some of the the fact that it's liquid too has something to do with it. That it gets in my system and I notice it. 30 well, I mean, minutes. the capsules are power. You power. said it's the only one that passes through the blood brain barrier, right? Yeah, there's a form of magnesium in there that was developed by MIT researchers, magnesium three and eight, and it actually passes through the blood brain. One of the challenges with magnesium is absorption. So you guys know those supplements like oh, what's the name? I think Calm is one of them where. It's like a powder. You throw it in water and it fizzes and you drink it. Yeah. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking a laxative because it doesn't really absorb into the body. It'll help mm. you poop, yeah. which is cool. Just make sure you're near a toilet. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't really absorb very well. So you have to take a lot of it consistently to get any real absorption. With the the, the forms of magnesium in Ned uh, in, the, in the Mellow, definitely do that. By the way, have you tried, I don't know if you guys have done this, have you combined the sleep with the mellow to see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't needed to. Would you wake up in another dimension? It's been, Dude, the, what happens? the Ned Mellow has been so consistent and so good for me that I haven't had to mess with anything uh, other than that. I, I combined the two. Yeah. It was, uh, let me, I, I go I, sleep when I'm out of mellow, but yeah, I've definitely prioritized mellow. Uh, oh, now. because sleep is so strong. Like it, it you is. take that and you don't operate That's heavy for traveling machinery. though. Oh my God. Like if I'm in a, a place where I know like my mind's just going to keep racing and I'm, I'm traveling like, I'm dropping some of those. I just thought it was interesting because um, I didn't have anything to compare to before that, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe it's less about exactly what Mello or what Ned has done and it's more to do. I was just magnesium deficient, so I should take these. In fact, I think I even took an extra pill. Like, I think it was like, I think the dose is two and I took three or four with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let me see if I, it's just, it's my magnesium deficiency. 
And that's what I always it didn't, do. Uh, take extra. Now I slept good that night, though. I do want to. I, I want to make that clear. So not to knock on Optum Nutrition ZMA product or whatever like that. That's not the point of me having this conversation. But I do. I I, I felt yeah. a clear difference the last because it's been now three days that I've been taking the ZMA mm -hmm. instead of the mellow version and it doesn't seem to to work the same way i can physically feel mellow set in i could be laying there and go like oh okay it's, there it it's, is yeah there it is it's hitting me wow yeah now have you guys done have you guys noticed the difference in your sleep from when you get sunlight versus when you don't oh yeah, oh, yeah. so big yeah, when big i go out we like this last couple of weeks because we've been around the pool and out, out there and stuff like that i sleep so much better when i get a good 20 30 minutes out in the sun versus a day when i'm trying to artificially get oh, it or dude, what I'm about with your kids like mm -hmm. my 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 baby son i take him out for walks and and i put him out in the sun and i put him in his little onesie so his little chubby legs stick out or whatever and he gets to get some by the way it's so funny he he looks like he's light complected but now that he's been in the sun i think he's going to be like me like all of complex like his little hands <laughs> and little legs uh, are getting yeah, yeah. dark you know yeah so it's really cute but Oh yeah, he sleeps so good just because we get you know ten minutes of sun exposure. Dude, I'll I'll share something a kid's story with you. This has happened to us last night. So Katrina and I had our I would say our first um, you know I don't know, disagreement, uh, a little frustration between the two of us uh, since Max has been born in front of Max. So this is the first, and and this is really, he's never seen you guys argue. Never, like we've never, we have never argued, we've never fought, we've never raised a voice, we've never sworn at each other ever in front of. So almost two years have gone by, and he's never experienced anything like that around Katrina and I. And last night we were talking about uh, something that was when we were getting into finance stuff, and it was a, 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 a bit of an emotional conversation between. Now, mind you, I want you to know that. There was no yelling. There was no swearing. There, it was just an intense conversation of mm -hmm. back and forth. So back and forth that there was no engagement in him. He was kind of playing on the carpet doing his own thing, and her and I were going back and forth. And it was like a good 15 minutes, and it was Katrina was a little emotional. She's talking about it, and I'm going back and forth. Again, not raising voices, nothing crazy, but enough that I completely noticed a crazy behavior changed in him. And it was so crazy to see the star contrast. Now, he's never done stuff like this. For example, we... We're her and I are going back and forth. We worked our way upstairs as we're kind of getting ready for a bath and we're still talking and having this, like her and I not even paying attention to him. It's about what we're talking about. And he comes over and he's like pulling on me and he starts to get a little more aggressive. And I'm like, yeah, and I kind of situate him and I'm still having this engagement back and forth with Katrina. And then he, then he starts trying to jump off the bed. So now I have to like definitely stop my conversation and not be distracted to grab him. Max, sit down, sit down. Sorry, here. I'm trying to settle him down so I can continue this conversation that I'm in the middle of with Katrina. And then he starts to go over to Mozzie. And we, we're really careful with him with Mozzie because Mozzie's already snapped at him before. And he's, he's at that age where he's rough. He pinches him and mm -hmm. hits him and does uh. stuff like that. And I'm, we just don't trust Mozzie not to, to nip at him if he does that. And so he starts going over trying to mess with Mozzie. And normally I, we, we tell him, I think I told you guys this, like we've taught him no thank you, right? So no thank you, Max. No thank you. Right. So I'm doing that. And he is like aggressively trying to get past he's me. He's trying like, to get you guys to just... Stop. It was so obvious. And then I, I get I kind of get in his way. Isn't it? He goes over and he's never done stuff like this before. I think I've talked about this on the show where uh, my son is so good when we're in, at other people's houses. People always go like, oh, do I need to put this off? The I'm like, no, he's cool. Like he won't touch your stuff on there. If he does, just tell him no, thank you. And then he won't do anything. He goes over and he knocks my book off the coffee table. He takes my my few straight glasses and throws them on the floor. And it was like, and Katrina and I both like were completely aware. <laughs> wow. so shut it down. It. Yeah. And we were tripping out. And we're like, <laughs> dude, how crazy is this? I was like, we're not even fighting right now. Obviously we're having an emotional, hard conversation. But the fact that he could pick up on the energy between her, it just highlights what we were just talking about the other day of like how ultra sensitive they are at that age. And all her and I could think about was like, wow, how crazy is that? We're not screaming. We're not yelling. We're not saying, we're not even being like that. Just the fact that we're having this intense kind of conversation and he's never been around wow. for that, yeah. how much it affected him that he was See, all. See, that's the secret. I mean, that of, is wild. That's the secret of Italian families is that we're just always yelling. <laughs> so <laughs> kids have no idea. They adapt and they This is normal. Yeah. 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 Oh, everything's cool. I just thought that was real. <laughs> you just talked about. We just talked about this on the show the other day about the. You know, we were we were speculating on the. You know, how much their their ability their other senses. Bro, they, are they heightened. can read any change. Any change in emotion or energy, of course. Yeah. They're so helpless. That's probably their well, only superpower. The thing that's trippy to me too is that like, uh, you know. 
I was very aware of that. How often does that happen to people? And that you're so into the conversation because I, I bet the first five minutes he was already starting to act that way. I just was so into the conversation. I was, I was kind of ignoring yeah, it, right. but he was so consistent with trying to get my attention and to where he was starting to be disruptive yeah. that I was like, Whoa, that is so wild. Like how often do people don't even pay attention or even notice their behavior? Because they're so into the well, argument. I had to and fight. notice that when he, he, everything was going down in the whole year, 2020 and all that kind of stuff was happening. I was like trying to have these like intense conversations with Courtney on like, you know, what's been going on. Like we're reporting on all this stuff. Like yeah, these events, like we're, we're, we're trying to get like evacuated from this fire coming in, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I had to be really uh, aware that the kids were, you'd see them like eavesdropping in, or you'd see them mm. sort of like taking your words and then passing them on to their uh, friends and all this time. I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. I have to like, so I started to take her outside and we'd have the, the intense conversation. We just do those outside, even if it's just informative, yeah. you know, it, like we weren't even arguing. I'm just like, that's how this was. This it wasn't, it wasn't, we weren't fighting. It was like a, you know, back, she was you know being completely open and she should probably get mad at me for sharing this much. But uh, when we were up in Truckee, um, I had made a comment to her using the credit card for some, you know, gas and random stuff like that. I'm like, why did you use the credit card? And she was upset at me that I I brought that up, but she's gonna be even more mad that I'm bringing up public. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned. Nothing. I can't help it, bro. I just it's, I I feel like Adam's uh, just way too honest. I, I, yeah, just, I know. I just can't help she's it. She's like, it's I don't most, mind. Yeah, if, what yeah. I mind is that you bring it up in front of people. <laughs> it's just the so whole like, world. Oh, I'll just bring it up for like no a million deal. people. No big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the truth. Like so. Um, and I and in her defense, I was totally I was out of line because I I didn't uh, I didn't see how it was received from her end, right? Like I wasn't meaning it. Like you know, like I I tell her she can't use this it was more like hey why'd you use that like yeah. you know and we, you don't need to do that just ask me and I'll, I'll send transfer money over to you or whatever like that or whatever we need to get that done and i guess she didn't have her 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 check card with her and then she was in the middle of doing mm -hmm. something so she just did it but obviously the way i did it and i did it in front of i think uh, courtney and justin and at the at the trucky house and stuff like yeah. that so it, it, it bothered her so mm -hmm. that's what really stemmed this conversation i was obviously defending myself and trying to explain to her what i meant by that yeah. she was d defending herself and so trying funny. to tell me what you know how hey it's not a matter of that it's just you gotta understand what, how you did that in front of people and yeah. so so it was totally not even real, like an argument it was just she felt very emotional about it i was a little defensive about how how i was saying it mm -hmm. and it was just us engaging back and forth i think and that you know, was enough enough for him to be off. Like yeah, that. I think besides yeah. the extreme stuff, obviously if a kid grows up in a violent, abusive neighbor, you know, uh family or whatever, that's that's aside from that, I think it has a lot to do with just the change, right? Like I remember going over to my cousin's house and we would do sleepovers all the time. His house was the polar opposite of my house. Oh yeah. It was quiet. Everybody was they, they kept their voices down. There wasn't a lot of yelling or whatever. And there were literally, I mean, and we used to, again, we used to hang out all the time. We grew up together. And I remember two times when his dad raised his voice. And I remember it because it was so dramatic. Now, I couldn't name you a time my dad raised his voice because it happened all day long, <laughs> every day. Yeah. My mom and every, my sister, my brother, you know, everybody's yeah. just screaming. So I think it was a change. And, and if I think back now, I, I, I would probably have been like, what the hell's going on if I saw my parents like whispering to each other or talking low? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, Why are they talking in a normal voice? Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I think the change makes a big difference. It's like, what's going on? Oh, it was, it, you know, it was, uh, so it was about a, a half hour before reading, reading bath and, and, and bedtime. And, and it, so, and kind of our routine is after she gets him out of the bath and she's starting to, to read the first books, so I'm downstairs kind of doing dishes and cleaning the, the house up. And then I, then I come up and, uh, she said he was standing at the edge of the bed, like yeah. calling for daddy. And so then I can't, and she called me in. So I came in the room and- Now, did I, you feel bad? Were you like, oh man, I feel oh, bad. Totally. Oh, totally. Like I, I told Katrina, well, I, I didn't feel too bad because we caught it, right? We were yeah. very we were very aware of it while it happened. And we instantly were affectionate in front of him. So And so that's what, what he did was he starts calling for me. Katrina calls me up earlier than I normally would come up to read. And so I came in right after he got out of the bath, sat down, and right away so he does this thing where he like he he uh, he touches her face and he touches my face and he pulls us together to kiss. Oh, I think I've told cute. you guys that before. <laughs> that's adorable. And so he he calls me in. I come in and then he he does that with both of us to get us. And then we kiss and then yeah. we're talking and we're playing. And then all of a sudden you could just see his his mood and his energy completely change. It's cool. Yeah. Wow. Wild. Now dude. does he does he does he ever lose his temper in a way where you're like you get it's funny like does he do this where he gets Bro, frustrated I, loses his he temper? has this thing and I and I so Katrina and I are like 
please God, let this be the way he throws a tantrum. So his new his thing when he like if you uh, if you if I have to like Max no or hey don't do that or if right. I if I do something that like startles him Abrupt. or don't let him have something. He does this thing where he lays down, and I would do it if the cameras could see me. He lays down on the, on the carpet, and he taps the floor, and he goes, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally that silent. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. And, and he'll do it, literally, and he's all in the middle of the floor, on the tile, whatever, and he'll, and he'll, like, he'll tap his fingers on the floor. Bro, if that's his tantrum, oh, you're the luckiest man on earth. It's, hilarious, it's so <laughs> hilarious to watch him do this, and he'll do it for a few minutes, and then he'll pop up. You know, look around to see if we were paying attention to what he was doing, and then go back to his stuff. I don't know if I'll be that lucky. <laughs> oh my god, it's yeah. the funniest. I don't know. My thing ever. my daughter used to throw. She's almost twelve, right? She used to throw tantrums. I swear to God, if there was a way to hook up wires to her, you could power <laughs> a city yeah. with the amount of energy she would produce. Now, Aurelius, I don't know. He's too young, right? He's only eight months old. But when I feed him, he loves eating. Like loves it. He gets super excited. I put him in his chair, and his hands and his feet get all pumped, and he's like, ah. And if I feed him and I take too long in between bites, he's like, ah, ah, yeah. ah. Yeah. I'm like, and we just crack up because I'm like, what are you doing, dude? I got your food right here. Relax. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he gets a little frustrated. I don't know what it is, but it's my favorite thing ever to when they get really pissed off to make, like, try and make them laugh and, and, or like tickle them or, or like jab at them. Like, they're as mad. they're in like this just stewed state of, ah, like, like I didn't get what I wanted. And, and then you're just like, oh, I just hammer them with jokes and, <laughs> yeah. and just make them crack. Like that's to me, it's a game. You know, have, like, I, I may have fun with it. Have you ever seen the video? One of my favorite videos. There's this little. I, he must be two years old, and he's throwing a tantrum on the floor, and the dad's recording it. And he, the dad, gets up and leaves the room. Oh, they hate it when you record. He, let, he gets up and yeah. leaves the room, and the, or someone else is recording it. So dad gets up, leaves the room, and the kid stops screaming, walks over to the room where dad is, falls waste, back on the yeah, floor. Yeah. Ah! And he does this like five times. The kid stops. He needs an audience. Yeah. And then he follows dad. Oh, there's dad. Ah, I'm on the floor. Yeah. I'm going to start screaming. I think I actually have a video of him doing this. So I'll, if I have it, I'll send it to Andrew so he can post it up. But it's it's the funniest thing ever when he when he does this. And I keep telling Katrina, I'm like, I mean, he's only two right now, right? So he turned two literally uh, tomorrow, right? So, uh, you know, I know I know this is like two to three is like when tantrums. Like well, really it's actually, I hate it when they say that. It's, in, in my experience and many other parents' experience, it's Three to four. Oh. Three is when I saw the worst. Two was like nothing. Oh, uh, see, my buddies, they're, they experienced it the worst two yeah. and a half to three. Did they really? Yeah. How old are their kids three now? Was about three and a half. Yeah. And they said, it, is it going down? Uh, it's it's less consistent than what it was before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was... it was. They the, call it, was, it the terrible twos? Yeah. Two and, two and a half to three was when it was the, the worst. And they, they seem to see, say that it's like... Yeah, they go through the there. spell where they're just trying to assert themselves and, and you know, they, they don't like hearing no all the time. So, you know, they're just like, well, I'm doing it this way. Ah! Yeah, no. so they most the re- so most the reading around that right. I know there's so many theories, but the prevailing theory on that is to to allow them to have that emotional reaction and to stay calm and collective. Don't yourself. react. Just yeah, w- don't react don't to react, it. Weather it out, and then help them work out like yeah. how they're feeling. Like, why do you feel this way, son? What's going on? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. What's you know? And like talk to them and just use but your words. Trying to. Uh, elevate your your you yelling to get them to calm down does not help the situation and the, the no. idea is to let them express their emotions and then help them unpack what emotions they're feeling and why yeah, they're feeling how, that way. Yeah, what, yeah. what spawned that. Yeah, then, my yeah. brother used to, he figured out that if he hit his head on the floor, that it would get my mom's attention. Oh my God. So that's how he threw a tantrum. <laughs> He's, ah! And then he, boom, you know? So <laughs> oh, she did, oh, what do I do? I gotta react. He's gonna oh, hurt himself. And I'm, Max oh, actually, yeah, I was cli- distracted. We had the first, sure. uh, he climbed out two nights ago. First time. Escape? Yeah. Uh, so that's we're now. You got to put, like, put chicken wire over the top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I hear that I, I got pretty lucky. I mean, we're he's two, and this is the first time he's tried to crawl out. And so he crawled out. And, well, now and, he knows, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I think it scared him. So he had, so the, the, this was two nights ago, two nights ago or three nights ago. Uh, he did it. And the, since then, he hasn't. And I think it might have scared him because he came, he fell. You know, he tried to make it over. It wasn't like he scaled down nicely. He was he made it over, toppled over, and poof, uh, landed on his landed on his butt. So he wasn't hurt, but I think it scared him because he was in the dark and he fell. And so he hasn't tried dude, to attempt. How it resilient then. are kids compared to like I, I, you watch little kids fall and get there, up? Yeah. Like if I tripped once, I'd probably injure myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're also like. 
you know that, I know that <laughs> that far off the ground. So I know that. A, well, a most of the time they won't even there. react unless you like make it like oh like a like a, an expression of of concern. Yeah. That, like most times they just are like oh wow that just happened. They pop right back. Yeah. Up. Uh, hey, speaking of intense, I'm going to take a, a, a left here. So I had gone dropped my caffeine intake over uh, the course of like three or four days, and then I hadn't used the pulse pre workout in a while. And I decided to go full serving, which is, uh, I think it's what, 350 milligrams <laughs> yeah. of caffeine wow. uh, with the beta alanine. That was it, a ride for it. It was, uh, it was a little too much. It oh, was yeah. really strong. And I had a very intense workout. It was hard to come down afterwards. I got to remember that I'm sensitive. To <laughs> so is that your, so is your gauge uh, how you sleep that night or how you feel directly after? Like what, what indicates to you like, okay, that was too much or I could have easily had half. I actually, like, how do you, how do you, how do you gauge that? So too much stimulant for me uh i'm definitely hyped and like ah, oh, ready to go but i have no I have less stamina so i find that i'm more out of breath while i'm working out because my heart beat is beating so fast oh, wow. the right dose i have more stamina i have more lasting power mm. as far as the sleep is concerned usually not an issue because remember i do it at 6 a.m so that's my that's my only way of measuring i feel it that's i don't really know to, if anything the more hyped i am i guess going into i know i take that back if i have if it was a day where I had coffee and a rock star, and then I'm dumb enough to actually try a pre workout like around two, and well, yeah, dude, that's yeah. you just said three things. Yeah, I know. So that is like, a, I'll actually feel almost like nauseous and a little lightheaded. Oh, when it's like yeah. it, I get an adverse effect for it. But even just uh, if, if I if I just had a little too much caffeine, the way I gauge it is completely on how I, how hard it is for me to sleep. And I even if I took it at six o'clock in the morning, if it's too much, really, yes, that's what I find really. Now I know there's a definite cut off that if I drink any caffeine, I mean just even a cup of coffee past three o'clock, I'm in for it. Like it's not going to be a great night oh, wow. of sleep, no matter what. Like it's going to be no matter all the cool supplements we can take to try and help me sleep, it'll be a struggle to to sleep if I go past that. Now if I go earlier than that, I'm typically okay so long as it's in that range of what's not too much for me. If it's too much, even if it was at noon or 6 a.m., mm -hmm. it's ruining that night's sleep. Yeah, you know, I know people who, because caffeine has a very, um, uh, what is it that I want to say? It's got a, uh, it, it, there's a, like a, a weird opposite effect that happens yeah. sometimes. This happens to me. Does that happen to you? It does, Where it yeah. actually makes you sleepy? It makes me sleepy uh, if I go a little bit past uh, the the amount that was like keeping me sleepy. Yes, that's, that's, I've, so I've heard about I that. I noticed yeah. that when I keep scaling it up, Mm -hmm. That's kind of when I know I've re reached you're my been, threshold. Yeah, you've been inundated too long with caffeine. I've, that's it, right. I, I so it. that's what I notice that when I'm doing the the two coffee and rock star type of drink every single day for a consistent amount of days, and then I try and do an extra one to kind of give me that extra boost. Isn't and that, that extra weird? one goes yeah. the other direction? Isn't I start, I start focusing more on drinking water at that point because I know that I've been uh, so focused on the caffeine aspect of it that I probably haven't been doing a good job of, of consistently hydrating throughout the day. I yeah. think what's interesting about this is that I know this is happening to most all my clients and most people that are probably watching and listening to this, but it's not talked about very much. It's uh, caffeine is because of all the, the studies and research on the positive. It's just benefits, such a common it's chemical. Such, it's a drug, dude. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. drug, and it's Legit. so it's, it's so drug. socially accepted that there's not a lot of conversation around like some of the adverse effects and just people think the more like they do about everything. If it's yeah. good, more is better. Right. And that is not the case with it. There is definitely a sweet spot for everybody. And knowing when you hit that and then you've been doing that for a while, knowing that if you back off for a while and then reintroduce, you'll get those benefits yeah. again. And then knowing if you just keep piling on, you lose a lot of those. You benefits. know, what's weird is there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of cases where, compounds that traditionally cause one effect will actually cause the opposite. Like for example, mm -hmm. uh, these like Xanax or these anti-anxiety medications in some cases, and it's not common, but in some cases it can cause extreme anxiety in people. Same thing with like Benadryl. So Benadryl is a very, very safe, commonly used, you know, antihistamine. It's also, it's also makes you drowsy and sleepy. If you've ever tried Benadryl, you know what that feels like. In some kids, you give them Benadryl and they're hyper- the opposite of sleepy. They can't go to sleep because they had Benadryl. Very yeah. interesting yeah. how some of the stuff, you know, kind of- How awful. Yeah, yeah it kind of works like, out. I got something interesting for you. I think, Justin, were you the one that brought up the Cameo app first? I think you were the first one to introduce yeah, that to us. Yeah, I think I brought that up because it was interesting. We actually used that for a birthday present for my mom. 
Oh, you did? Yeah, we had this guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway, Colin, the, the bald guy. Oh, yeah. Do this whole thing. Because like, one of her friends looks just like him, and so we had him pretend to be this guy. Oh, and, no and way. Do this whole little no way. act and like, is you it know, expensive? dress it to her. It's um, it depends. Like, it's not that the more famous they are, yeah, the more expensive it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he it wasn't too bad at all. I mean, so it's it varies. Yeah, based off of like what type of person is on. So there. I g- agreed, a brilliant business model, right? Um, t- TikTok is adding that feature to their their platform. Wait a minute. So, so, so obviously, if you're an influencer on TikTok, people can pay. And or famous. You're Will Smith, you're, which sure. almost everybody's getting on TikTok now. So TikTok is now offering that as a feature for them. So I'm sure, and I haven't seen what the final uh, product will look like as far as yeah. how they'll integrate it, but I'm assuming that it'll look like something like this where they can DM you or message you and it'll be an automatic way for you to pay the influencer through that. And I'm sure Here's TikTok- $10, do that weird, stupid dance. Yeah, well, thing. what I don't <laughs> wow. what I don't know is if, if TikTok is going to use it to make money themselves or it will go all to the influencer or the famous person sure that's doing it. I don't know, or maybe it's just to gain attention. It's a smart if they if Cameo is having a tremendous uh, you know success with building this whole platform around that, which I'm sure they're taking a cut. It might be a brilliant move for TikTok just to add it as a feature, just to steal all that business. One of the reasons, my opinion, one of the reasons why yeah, YouTube, do it. yeah, one of the reasons why YouTube is one of the most successful platforms, the second largest search engine on the internet, is because they have clear cut easy ways for people to create content and monetize Mm -hmm. better than any other platform. There is no other platform that I can think of that allows you to monetize as easily as YouTube. And so what it does, it attracts talent and attracts content producers. Uh, And I think that's the next level of competition between social media platforms. That's why I don't think they're going to take it. I don't think they are going to take money from it. I think that they're- They just want the content. That's right. They just want to be- uh, I And yeah. I think you're right. I think Instagram will probably offer a, a similar feature to make sure they stay in the game. Yeah. I think They've done that with Snapchat and all these other- like uh, They'd make the competitive version of it. Yeah. No, I mean, this is to your- uh, You love this stuff, right? This is just an example of free markets that everybody competitively can start to try and- And, you, and it great for the consumer. So something that probably cost us more money through Cameo, now, now may be a discounted rate. Again, I'm, I'm speculating. I don't know if that's what it'll look like, but I'm pretty sure- that that's what they would do. It's not like TikTok. Well, there's, it, I mean, there's valid business. There's people on there that are influencers that are making a lot of money. Like, why not, yeah, create that outlet for them to, you know, maximize all their efforts anyways. Yeah, I don't even keep up with, do you guys, uh, you know, this is me reading like my articles and stuff like that. The reason why I know that, but I mean, TikTok, Instagram, they're always rolling out new features like mm-hmm. this, like on a, on a regular basis to try and stay competitive. It's interesting and too, because all the test groups and they do all over the world, like how the different markets, like they create specific things for these markets that do better there as opposed to the States. And it's always interesting to see what people are into. Speaking of that. So did you see what Norway just came up and did? Uh-huh. Norway is criminalizing the, uh, anybody influencers that Photoshop, their photos oh, on Instagram. What? Criminalizing? Yeah, that's right. If you do not, if you if you, you have you, to say that it's that it's you, right. You have to say that it's photoshopped. Which who's going to do that? Okay, what? you have to say that it's uh, photoshopped in order for you to post it and utilize it and as any sort of way of advertising or an ad. How, How do, do they, they manage get, that? Yeah. Do they have some kind of? Uh, well, I think it's I'll, actually easier than what you think, and it's just probably like the way paying taxes is. They're going to go after the biggest offenders and people. They're not going to mess with somebody who's got. 10,000 right. followers and is probably making $300 off of Photoshop. Make examples of like- That's right. They're going to go people. after the big fishes that have been doing this for a long time or manipulating photos to try and sell products and they have large followings. That's a and very they very interesting them. move. It, it so is. Too. It's just, but in my opinion, it's like, okay, people are voluntarily choosing to look at these things. You're, you're creating this picture of yourself. I mean- I get what they're trying to do, yeah. Uh, but really, I mean, it's been happening in magazines for as long as magazines have been around forever. I mean, yeah. that's uh, photoshopping and editing and and doing that is it's TV, just it's gotten movies, so everything. good and so user friendly that you you could the average kid could figure it out. And so, so now will more. they find the social media company too or the actual influencer? 
Oh, I, it's the influencer that's doing okay. it. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, a, a company is paying them to do an ad, like just like we we get, right? Not like uh, any of our brands, you know, Legion or, or ButcherBox and them go like, you guys need to do an ad this way. They just trust us to go do what we're supposed to do. That's how all companies pay these influencers. I mean, sure, they have some direction, but they're not being coached to, as far as I know, they're not being. I know Now, I do know that that was part of the rumors when Shreds went under was they the, why they were under fire was that all those athletes were photoshopping their stuff yeah and the rumor was that and i don't know if this has been confirmed or not but the rumor was that they they were coaching the people to do that right so the the actual people that were running i'm sure they were I mean, running that yeah. were whether they were coaching it or those that were having success were sharing it with all the others and that was happening regardless mm. there's an area where i could see like the company so, could get penalized so what's going to happen when like photos and videos are all uh, AI. At some point, I know they're all going to be computer generated images because they're going to look so good. It's not a real person anyway. They won't be able this, to. This the whole Doctor Frankenstein thing where where they start like uh, that 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 was one of the the things that I think we've gotten away from that because um, it, there's there's a lot of um, deep fakings I think they call them yeah. right where. They'll, they'll take celebrities or they'll take uh, certain like world leaders and like have them uh, say something completely I different and you, and you can't distinguish the real person from the fake, uh, which is something that all these companies are going to have to deal with at some Dude, point. That tech is going to get so crazy in the next 10 years that I don't think we're going to, I think we're going to get a point where we're not going to trust anything. Because you're going to watch a video. I mean, oh my gosh! Look what happened we're over here. Almost there. I mean, it, oh. I, w I would love to see a poll about like how cynical people are with media. Oh, you? Oh, yeah. the one came out. Did okay. You, yes, one came out. So really? they they polled all kinds of countries, and the country with the least trust in their media was da, America, da, da, da. U.S. We had the wonder least, why. Yeah, tremendous drop in trust in our media over the last uh, couple Did, decades. They really <laughs> done a amazing job yeah they, of, really, of they're killing like everything that i believe in well you, i saw i don't know if you got if it's obviously somebody i think we all follow but somebody posted this i don't remember or else i'd give them credit um posted this like little caption or meme that showed uh you know how how many thousands of years fire has been around language and song has been around and then the internet is less than 40 years old so it's like so in its infancy it's as far as- It's the Wild West. Though, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and the re I think the idea that is to compare the power of it in comparison to language and fire, some of the most powerful things that we've ever created. And right? all of them have cre had problems. Uh, like, right. Like when we first harnessed fire, you don't think we were setting fire to shit? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Still you know, and I think that was the point, today, right? Yeah. I think that was the message behind that is just like, man, we are really in the, in the early years of this. You know, obviously if you're only 30 or 40 years old, it's your lifetime. And so it seems like it's forever but as a society, we still uh, we, we still are learning. We don't even know the long term effects of using it as much as we use we it. We don't know. Well, I mean, each invention gets more and more uh, impactful and dangerous. Like nuclear, obviously, weapons, big deal, right? Uh, AI is it going to surpass in terms of the danger that you'll, mm -hmm. you get from nukes? Maybe, probably. Well, and just like average people having so much uh, ability to to get their voice out there. Uh, it, it has been really crazy to watch. But, I mean, on the other side of it, you see uh, a lot of these, like, institutions, like, being exposed for all of the, uh -huh. the corrupt bullshit. And it's it's hard to deal with. We're all like, you know, how do we deal with this? Uh, because it's so blatantly obvious. But uh, this is what we're going to have to sift through. Well, I'm going to keep saying this one, and I've said it multiple times on the show because I know it's going to end up happening, and it's going to be a big conversation in the next decade. And it's not yet. Which is the what uh, the damage it's doing to kids and their posture? Um, I have a buddy right now who has a, who has a daughter, and they're they they can't get to the bottom and the root cause of what's going on. Um, her jaw locks out, and she gets like this really stiff neck, and 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 her jaw. Do you hurts. think it's connected to her own devices? So that's my theory. Is because they'll hand her the iPad and then she she can sit there. Now they're mm. actually pretty good about they don't let her do it a lot. Like I have another buddy who lets their kid do it a lot more than they do. But I mean, every time she does, she's sitting in this kind of weird kind of fixed position. Mm -hmm. And you got to think that that's going to have long-term effects. We never had that. 
You yeah. know, our generation did, was not born into the iPad, iPhone, very normal to allow a two-year-old or a three-year-old to sit and look at this thing. And that is just not a normal posture for yeah. a kid to have. Have you, it, have you seen the artist, this is artist did this rendition of what humans would evolve to? Uh. That with all creepy. this tech yes. and have you seen this picture it, no, almost like it sh they shrimp into this weird it's like this weird like like big belly looking like with the forward head creature and that's like this is what humans will look like <laughs> i don't know if, if doug can oh, find this but yeah it's creepy dude. it's uh, yeah it's i mean fun. and the, here's the thing right now it's it's we're in the middle of it and it's it's going to be so it's just like you like when you look at yourself in the mirror every single day it's so, so hard to see the change sure it's when you look at month year 10 year snapshots is when you go, Oh my God, look what's how much on? I've changed. Right. So we're seeing, that's what's going on yeah. right now with kids. It's happening before our eyes and very few people can really tell a difference until we've got decades under this of consistency, letting kids doing, then we're going to look back and go, like, Oh my, Oh yeah. Look at that. That's not it either. That's that one looks bad, oh, but no. there's one where it's like this weird looking, uh, I don't know. It's, it's gross. We'll, we'll try and find it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I th I just think that this is going to be a major conversation in the next decade or two, and it's just the only reason why it's not because it's happening already. And I well, think tech's not going to stop. They're going to try and uh, scramble to find another way to deliver the you know the interface. So it's either going to be like it, in front of your eyes, and it just turns on, and they'll kind of try to figure that out, like with augmented reality. Uh, but yeah, I think the whole phone thing, um, it has a shelf life. I, I don't really see like uh, decades from now, you know, people still being glued in that position because of, they're going to see what happens as a result of that. Yeah. yeah. That's it right there, Doug. You just moved over the guy. No, the guy's sitting right there with the, looks <laughs> yeah, all that's right. Dude, look at this like weird, disgusting depiction. He's just, of, he has like no neck and he's just, Oh no, like, that's a car smashed. accident survivor. That's, oh, that's what a human would have to look like to okay. car, surviving a car accident. My bad. <laughs> but, the, that come out? but the girl right there is that, that girl right there is another, is, is yeah. another depiction of, yeah, that yeah. looks, that looks to me what we're going to, we're going to see. I, I mean, do you guys notice it? I notice it. I mean, yes. I'm saying uh, oh. the, the trainer, yeah. I remember when I started learning Dreamy. about core and posture and, and, and going through my corrective exercise specialist stuff. Like I became super like, uh, I love people watching anyways. And now like I always look at posture and movement Dude. and, all these high school kids, I put them up to the zone one test. Do you think any of them passed? See, that's crazy to me. Zero. See, that's crazy to me that zero kids would pass that. When I think just my theory is two decades ago, majority of them would pass. At yeah. that young of an age, high school, yeah. I don't I don't remember seeing that much of a difference in kids' posture. They that formed year. into this, you know, forward position no. by then, you know. Yeah. It was usually years later. It's like when you watch uh, Wally, remember Wally? Yeah. Uh, it's was like a, 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 part of me was kind of part of me was like, "Oh, is this the future?" You know, part of me was like, "Oh, it's entertaining." The half of me is like, "That, uh, that literally is what Disneyland is starting to look like." Is this a documentary? Like, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah, totally. <laughs> hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Check out some of their interesting products. So what you do is you listen to their sounds, their music, their beats, whatever you want to call them, and they induce different states of mind as proven by studies. This stuff legitimately works. No, no joke. One of my favorites is their focus music. When I listen to it, it actually induces a state of focus. They also have good ones for meditation, for sleep. Very inexpensive. And of course, because you're a Mind Pump listener, you actually get 20% off if you head over to that link. Again, it's brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. First question is from It's SJ Life. What's your view on shakes and fat burners to shed weight? <laughs> waste of money for the most part. <laughs> All total, in. Total waste of money. Here's the benefit you might get from fat burning supplements, which are just typically, you know, supplements that have lots of stimulants in them. So like Siniferin, Back in the day, ephedra, there might be Yohimbi in there. Uh, there might be, you know, definitely caffeine or other stimulant-based compounds. Is they do uh, they do reduce appetite. So when you take those, you'll find that you're not as hungry. So you think, okay, well, that's effective. That's good then. Well, here's a problem. It's very short-lived. Your body adapts very quickly to them. And then there's a, a definite rebound when you go off of them. Overall. Uh, waste of time and money. It, it, it's it's not going to really do much for you at all, especially when you compare it to diet, exercise, and sleep. Now, if you want to take them because you think they're fun, you like getting hyper sometimes, uh, you enjoy the way that they feel, that's fine. But taking a fat burner thinking, this is going to make me leaner, you're totally wasting I think fat money. burners are up there with the, the 
biggest piece of trash in the yeah. supplement industry. I don't I I can't even get behind what you're saying right now because I think there's other supplements that give you all those up feelings and other and the whole appetite suppressing thing like I don't know about that. Like fast, that'll suppress your appetite. Don't eat, you know what I'm saying, for an extended period of time or or eat whole foods, right? Or yeah. eat meat first or eat, you know, eat protein, more protein in your diet. Those all those things will satiate, mm -hmm. curb appetite as good or better uh, better than fat than those burners things. and sugar pills. Exactly the same. Yeah, dude, they're mind. garbage. Yeah. Absolute garbage. Now, the protein shake thing though, uh, I mean using it with the way some people recommend it, which I'm not a fan of, is with the idea of, oh, eliminate your foods and replace it with these shakes to lose weight. The slim fast method. Yeah, all, <laughs> all you're doing is you're just taking an average you know, 350 to 400 calorie meal and replacing it with a 180 calorie or 200 calorie shake, and it's just a calorie game you're playing. And the reality is that's not very sustainable long term because who's going to eat drink shakes for the rest yep. of their life? So I, I, I hate that as a strategy too. Now that doesn't mean I think uh, protein shakes are a waste of money. There's, they're extremely useful when needed. If somebody has a hard time reaching their protein intake and their goal is fat loss, there's a lot of benefit to you making sure you hit your protein intake so that when you're working out, you build muscle, which then in turn speeds your metabolism yeah. up. So shakes have tremendous value if you struggle to hit your protein intake or if you don't have a good healthy choice around and you're like, oh, I could either order this uh, you know, uh, burrito or this uh, Big Mac that my buddy's ordering right now, or I can be disciplined and have this protein shake. Yeah, Gr Great great decision yeah. right there. But, but adding but it to your normal eating isn't yeah. going to make you lose weight. Like I remember when I was a kid, I had an aunt that had uh, these diet popsicles. They were like, Weight Watchers, di weight loss slim, popsicles. fast ones? Yeah. yeah. And I remember thinking, don't eat those because you'll lose weight. Like it'll make it. No, that's not how it works, right? So you can't Throw a shake on top of your well, normal that's what the food label says. and expect to lose weight. It, it doesn't work that way. There's a dark side, by the way, to all these stimulants, which is that they do spike stress hormones in the body. And let's say you're somebody that's already pushing it with your training. Your mm -hmm. training is like you're, you're, you're redlining, you're hitting that limit, you're optimizing everything, you're doing what your body can handle to try to get the best results. Then you throw on top of it something that spikes your cortisol or stress hormones you actually might make yourself go backwards. I've had cases where people have lost muscle from taking too many Yeah, because you're not burners. fully recovering. I mean, you're, you're just keeping your body in the state of stress con like consistently. And, uh, you, you know, your, your body in that state uh, isn't going to be able to repair itself very effectively. Next question is from Amber Salino. When reverse dieting, should macros or calories be the priority? Yeah, so this is an interesting one because uh, macronutrients have calories, so macros, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Uh, the key with reverse dieting is to slowly increase your calories over time, try to build some muscle, try to speed up the metabolism through that process. So it's and typically you want to do resistance training as part of this, bump your calories slowly, your metabolism actually will speed up so you can eat more. Now, are macros an important part of that? Of course, because you still want to hit your protein, especially protein and fat requirements. Um, and high protein is going to help this process. So it's hard to, it's hard to say which one well, is more important. I feel it's a very simple answer. It's The answer is macros. The reason why it's macros is if you hit your macros, you hit your calories. If you hit your calories, you don't necessarily hit your macros. Right. So it's to me, it's a That's very a it's a very simple answer. Like if you figure out using some sort of a macro calculator or doing it longhand, this is what I need to be eating: proteins, fat, and carbs. Those are your macros, and you stick to those. You'll hit what you're supposed to hit calorie wise. You'll be either if you're reverse dieting, you'll be etch etching it up slowly like you're supposed to. If you're dieting and cutting, you'll be hitting under the calories like you're supposed to. Uh, if you just follow calories and say, "Oh, I'm trying to reverse diet and I was at 1,700 calories, now I want to be at 1,900," but those 1,900 calories all come from carbs and not enough protein, or too much fat, not enough protein, or, or, or at that, then you then it's not working. So if you just follow the macros, yeah. Then you're, it's inevitable the calories will line up. Isn't uh, the term reverse dieting? Isn't that just redundant, right? Because <laughs> mm. aren't you just or eating? an oxymoron? It's more of an oxymoron than a redundant. focusing on eating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that's so, your focus instead of dieting. What's right? the opposite it's, of dieting? Well, I think be? so. I think the reason why it's 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 coined as a diet is because you you are following some sort of a structure. It's not intuitive, mm -hmm. right? You you are strategically adding calories slash right. macros to the to to your you're diet. You're scaling it up because you're trying to yeah, that's right. increase it, it, the amount of calories. So I think that's day. why it gets yep. it gets termed as a diet because you're 
you're not necessarily reducing, you're adding to your point. Right. Uh, so I get what and you're saying. And it is a strategy. I'm just kind of talking shit, but that's, you know, it's something I think a lot of people like me would be confused with this, just throwing that term out there if you're not in the bodybuilding world yeah. uh, specifically. Uh, so this is more like a lot of competitors will get to that point where they get down. Yeah. So their no, that's metabolism a, that's a, is so low. That's a great point. So we can bring, so we can take this down to the audience who's not into the bodybuilding world or understands that. But what you need to understand that when you, when you, even if you're not competing, you're just dieting, right? Lo trying to lose weight, right. you're eating in a, a calorie restricted diet for an extended period of time. The body eventually adapts to that, that new calorie intake. So if you're somebody who was say eating 2,500 to 3000 calories, you went on a diet that restricts you down to 15 or 1800 calories and you've been on that for six eight 12 weeks to get to your goal and you get to your goal what you don't want to do is go back to your 25 or 2800 eating calories because the body is now adapted right. so you need to reverse diet meaning you need to slowly introduce calories over the course of the next two four six eight 12 weeks depending on how long it takes you to get up to whatever calorie intake you want to be up to and this what this will do is is naturally allow the body to slowly adapt to the new caloric intake without throwing a ton of extra calories on and then adding body fat so yeah. that's the idea or concept behind it next question is from salar seven does training fasted make you stronger in your workouts I always feel much sharper and mentally clear, which really translates to my lifts. Yeah, you know what this highlights? Mm. This highlights the individual variants that you find with almost everything. Because studies will show that eating uh, a couple hours before your workout will result in better performance, pretty yeah. consistently. Like mm -hmm. they show pretty consistently performance is better when you eat you know, a couple hours before and you have a protein, carbohydrate rich uh, meal is what they'll say you'll have better performance. However, there are cases like this where this person's like, I feel better and sharper when I train fasted. You know who else feels that way? I do. I feel better working out fasted than when I'm necessarily fed or whatever. So this is a big individual variance thing. You got to kind of listen to your body. Most people will do better yeah. being fed. But that being said, there are people that do better. And uh, I fasted. think, you know, sometimes there's a window to that. So if this is a new concept, like if you've just started kind of trying to, to be in a fastest state, you're realizing, you're actualizing um, the fact that you have more mental clarity and sharpness and um, you're sort of, you know, fueling that into your workout. But at a certain point, if you've been doing it long enough, which is what I've experienced, if I'm not fed, I don't really, uh, at a certain point, like my energy dips and, and it drops if I, if I don't have that to pull from. So um, there's, there's sort of a benefit and a detriment depending on, um, <clears throat> you, you know, obviously the individual variances to that, but I, I, I do see like a mental sharpness and in, in, in terms of like being able to access the central nervous system, um, you know, that's been helpful, but, uh, you, you know, these, and the, the type of the workout matters too, if I'm going for more endurance or I'm like, it's a really rigorous, uh, type of workout. I need to be fed. Yeah. So m my personal experience with it is. Uh, I'm the opposite of Sal. I've actually uh, hate being fasted. I do not feel as strong. I don't feel as the energy. I do notice mental clarity. That's why I love to be fasted for like podcasting or if I'm writing or I'm doing something that I, I need to be clear and right. sharp. Uh, I do see lots of, I see the cognitive benefits of doing that. I do not see the performance benefits. Now, that being said, this last year or two, there's been quite more often than not, I'm actually training fasted. Uh, and I have felt my body adapt to it and get better at it. So what felt miserable before, like when I first started playing with that, I remember when we first started talking about intermittent fasting and you were actually talking about, oh man, I feel better. I actually mm -hmm. feel more energetic. And you were talking about all the benefits. I was like, okay, well, let me play with it. And I was like, nah, dude, this is not for me. I feel way tired. I don't feel as strong. I feel super weak. I halfway through the workout, I want to quit early and I hated it. And so I kind of went away from it. But uh, and not trying to train fasted. It just started happening because we're training in the morning. So a lot of times I come here on nothing but maybe a cup of, cup of coffee. So I'm not completely fasted, uh, but pretty much, right? I'm going into these workouts with not a lot of calories to support. Uh, and I, my body's have gotten used to it that now I don't feel miserable why I do it. I feel actually pretty good and okay. But I still notice if I have a day where I've had two or three meals and I have a later training session, much stronger. I, I tend to have a longer, better workout when I do that. Yeah. I think, you know, too, Justin, you brought up a good point. The type of workout is going to make a big difference. I think mm. if you're going to do an endurance workout, uh, it's going to be long and grueling. You're probably going to want to eat. Yeah. At some point you might hit a wall and that's not going to feel very good, but it, it is really interesting at the variance between 
people and how they feel. And you really got to look, if you feel better working out first thing in the morning without having any food, then do it. If you feel better eating an hour or two before, then go ahead and do it. I really don't think there's a wrong answer here. Next question is from Taylor Louise. If you're in a calorie deficit, would you expect to experience more muscle soreness and a longer recovery time? If so, should you reduce intensity or volume or increase calories for a couple of weeks? Good yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. So, cool question. So let's talk about soreness for a second because this is something that's uh, uh, interesting. I will get more sore when I bump my calories versus when I cut them. Now, it's not because of the calories, but rather- you're training harder. I'm stronger. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like I'm lifting more weight. You press it more, harder. Yeah. yeah, and I notice this. If I cut my calories, I don't get sore like I, mm. like I normally do. If I cut, increase my calories, now I'm all, all of a sudden I'm lifting- 10, 15% more weight, I'm going to get sore. Now let's go back to recovery because soreness and recovery aren't necessarily, they're, they're somewhat connected, but they're not synonymous with each other. Can I handle the same volume, load, and frequency on a calorie deficit as I can in a calorie surplus? No, not, I can't. I just don't have as much energy. My body has less to pull from. Um, if I'm well fed, I can work out more, more often, and do better. So at some point, Cutting your calories will reduce your body's ability to recover. You just have less, uh, you know, resources available to that, that's fuel the, your body. That's the simple way to put it: is that when you train and and we lift and you get sore from your workout, your your body needs to pull from nutrients to recover, primarily like from protein, right? So it's looking for that ability to recover, adapt, and build muscle. If you restrict. It's it's resources and you don't give it what it, it enough of what it needs. It's not going to do it as effective. So I, if all things are considered equal, and I train intensely and volume wise consistently, and the difference between calorie deficit for surplus, I know it's a significant difference in recovery. In mm-hmm. fact, one of the things that is always a clear indication that when I'm not tracking and I'm just eating intuitively, that I'm probably under consuming protein and or calories, is that I'm having a harder time recovering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's one of the first things that go to I things that I, I start to assess is mm-hmm. that, uh, and I know my personal habits is under eating protein. I just think it's hard for me to get 200 grams consistently unless I'm actively pursuing it. So normally this is one of the signs that reminds me of that is I keep noticing like, man, I am just not recovering very quick and I just, it shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't feel sore for this many days. I know how hard I'm training. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. And that is normally an indicator for myself that, oh, I'm probably not getting my body enough nutrients it needs to really yeah. to recover fast enough. Yeah, but I'm with you, Sal, with the, the self-governing aspect of that when you're in like in a deficit, like, I just don't tend to over uh exert myself quite the same as when i'm like super fed and like getting after it but Mm -hmm. i mean that would be like the the main difference between that for being sore yeah Uh, but yeah it it, it, as far as like recovering like yeah making sure my protein and is in there is is, is essential for me to to feel like i'm fully recovered yeah now there is a a school there's a quote or a school of thought that says which is so dumb they say there's no such thing as overtraining just under there's only under eating right no Mm. that's not true Mm -hmm. yes you can under eat and that can affect the bro bible but it's not absolute. So you can't just eat your way into recovery, uh, muscle recovery. And that means that you could just train as long and as hard as you want. And just get, what you'll end up doing is overtraining terribly and getting fat. That's what will happen if you, if you apply that in, in an extreme way. You're just, you're not going to, your body won't improve. And, and I, I look, I did this as a kid. I, I remember reading this and thinking, oh, cool. Let me just eat it more and more and more. And no, it doesn't work. You could totally overtrain, regardless of how much food. Uh, you smash into your mouth. So look, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com so you can check out some of our free guides and free information. We have guides on everything from fat loss to muscle building to specific lifts. We have a guide on how to squat better, for example. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Not falling in love with ideas, mm. which is this huge flaw for people who are aspiring entrepreneurs is they get this idea and they fall in love with it. But the idea is always terrible. If you've hung your self-esteem 